Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to the Sheep Pen, bah, where no goats are allowed. A viewer this week uh, hit me up because they did not know the meaning of the intro. But if you don't know what that means, the sheep and the goats, please read Matthew 25. It's a short read. It will explain everything. But ultimately, God wants us to be good people and not selfish. And uh, so that's what that's all about. So all the good people, welcome. All the selfish people, you know, you're out of here. <laughs> this is not a safe place for you. <laughs> Today, I want to talk about whether or not God has blessed America or whether we are under a curse from God. Uh, before we get into that, I want to thank all of you who support this channel. Uh, this channel is made possible because of you, my viewers. Thank you for every thumbs up, for every positive comment, for every uh, good thing you've said about me. Thank you for liking and sharing and thank you for subscribing to this channel. And uh, thank you so much for your financial contributions. I couldn't make it without viewers like you. You fund everything and all there is to fund is just my electric bill and keeping my car running and keeping my house running and keeping the lights on here in the cabin in the woods uh, where I intentionally live at the poverty level. And so it's your uh, small but very um, needed uh, contributions that keep this channel going and keep me alive. So thanks to all of you. You know, <clears throat> I try to be a little prepared for anything, you know, that might happen, like some of the stuff we talk about could happen on this channel. And I ran out of soap the other day, a couple, maybe two, three weeks back. And I remember thinking, I need to go buy a whole bunch of soap. But before I could, and I never even said this out loud, much less on the channel. Before I could, a viewer bought me uh, 20, I think 25 bars of soap. Yeah. So thank you. And it's and it's better than the cheap Walmart brand I would buy, right? They sent that out to the P.O. box, along with some great uh, health and um, uh, grooming items. So thank you all for your gifts, your financial gifts, your actual gifts uh, to the P.O. Box, all your contributions. Thank you so much. So there's an old song that you never hear anymore, but I grew up hearing it a lot. It goes, uh, God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her. Through the night with the light from above. Are we blessed? Were we once blessed? Will America ever be blessed by God again? How did we get in this situation? How did we go from being blessed by God to being potentially cursed by God? How did we get to the situation we're in now? You know, we talk a lot on this channel about what's wrong with the government, about what's wrong with uh, people's politics, about what's wrong with culture, about what's wrong with even the church. And we know that our situation is dire. The United States is currently facing a future that is not at all a bright one. We're facing a dire future for the first time in modern history. Um, you know, Life today is extremely challenging and for many, many reasons. Some would argue our society is literally falling apart at the seams. We stand on the precipice of World War III in Europe and the Middle East. And at the same time, we have never been more divided to where people are literally talking about a national divorce or a civil war in this country. That corruption has spread uh, to every corner of our society it's even present in the church today. Heard just a headline the other day how a person who'd been a youth pastor down in Texas, and I guess I, it really caught my ear since I used to be a youth pastor down in Texas, and uh, how this guy went from church to church serving as youth pastor while he was uh, molesting children. You know, one of the uh, biggest TV preachers and, and head of, of a mega church, uh, the Gateway Church, their, um, their founder is actually my first mentor in ministry. And I heard a story recently how even back when I knew him in the 80s, he was, he was actually uh, molesting children, young girls, clear back in the 1980s. 
And now Robert Morris has been outed for this. So, you know, there's always been turncoats. There's always been bad people. There's always been Benedict Arnold's. There's always been evil people in the world. But I think few could argue that the level of evil that has penetrated our country at every level is unprecedented in modern history, most especially in my lifetime. So where did we get wrong and how can we get right? When did we lose the blessings of God and how can we get them back? How can we live lives that are blessed again? Blessed financially, blessed with a harmonious home, blessed with love, blessed with family and children, blessed with peace in our nation. How can we get back on track? And where did we go wrong to begin with? I saw a recent video titled, how baby boomers destroyed the world. <laughs> how they ruined the world. And I hate to just pick out one generation, but anybody who has a cursory glance at modern American history will say that the wheels started to go off. Uh, the train started to go off the tracks. The wheels started to come off the machine. That is America. When the baby boomer generation came to age. You know, um, there's a famous and viral documentary video where they do an experiment with mice. You know, mice, uh, their whole lives are based around survival, their survival instinct. They're just trying to get food. They're just trying to get shelter. And so this experiment takes mice and gives them everything they need. It gi They give them, um, you know, shelter and all the food they can have, all their creature comforts, they got the little wheel to play on. They got this big community of mice to run and, and be involved with. And the mice, the mouse nature starts to change. They go from being industrious to being lazy. They go from being curious to being apathetic. They get obsessed with uh, reproduction and personal grooming. They'll just sit around and do all their personal grooming and fix their little mouse ears and their little mouse hair all day long. And... They, but they become inherently unhappy to the point where they stop reproducing and the, the colony eventually dies out. And it's, uh, it's called the Great Mouse Experiment, I think. You might want to check into it. But what it tells us is that when people have it too easy, right, when they, uh, when they have everything they need, when they're prosperous in animals, it's, it's animal nature and it's human nature for them to become self-obsessed. If I had to put my finger on the main problem with people in this world, the, the main character flaw that all Americans and much of the world share is this self-absorption. This, uh, you know, there are more um, makeup videos and more grooming videos and more weight loss videos on YouTube than there are preaching videos or probably even political videos. And this obsession with self, this selfishness, is a result of having everything they needed. See, the baby boomer generation was the most blessed generation in human history, well, in American history, we'll put it that way, and probably in human history. You know, the 1950s, and 60s were amongst the best times financially as far as stable family goes. You got low crime. You got a lot of community involvement. Churches are growing. Um, people are prospering. And out of that comes this rebellious response. This, you know, what have you done for me lately kind of ideology that starts to come out of the baby boomer generation. And I'm not saying Gen X is any better. You know, we got dealt the cards we got dealt and we went with the flow. But the real innovators, innovators, and I say it with quotation marks and a little sarcasm, the real changers of our society and not for the better was the baby boom generation. That this generation had the best toys growing up. They had the best bicycles. They never missed a meal. I mean, yes, there's hardship always in any culture and any time. But for the most part, this generation that would go on to, uh, to change our world dramatically in my lifetime, this generation right before me, they had it, they had it the, they had the best. They had the best of everything, generationally speaking. Even African Americans uh, who, yes, there was racism. Yes, there was institutional racism. 
and they may not have had as much and done as well as their white neighbors, but they were collectively better because the whole country was better. Uh, you can be the bottom of the rung as long as the ladder is way high, all right? That even though they have more equality now, African Americans, they're doing worse now than they were in the 1950s and 60s because we're all doing worse than we did in the 1950s and 60s. Look at it this way. In the 1950s and 60s, one person could have a full-time job doing just about anything and support the entire family, making sure that the, that the whole family was fed, clothed, and had shelter. Now it takes two or three incomes <clears throat> that you can have two people, and unless they have really great jobs, they can barely make ends meet with both of them working. And, you know, to really make ends meet, you got to put your teenagers to work too nowadays. And it's... Uh, it's because of a general loss of economic power. It's because of so many different different things going on, but you know, primarily inflation, the destruction of the dollar, the outsourcing of our of our uh, industry to international sources like China. And you know, I'm not an econo an economics uh, expert. But uh, it doesn't take a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. So it doesn't take an economic expert to see that. Uh, life was better then, and there was more opportunity then for everyone, even those that were discriminated against. Still had it better than, than the best of us do today. And that's just by nature of losing God's blessing. God, wasn't, God stopped blessing America. And, you know, you could sit and go, well, it's because of this, it's because of that, it's because of this other thing. But I'm going to turn to the Bible. And I'm not a big Old Testament fan, but I got to tell you, there's a lot of gold in the Old Testament. I, I'm a Jesus guy. I'm a Gospels guy. That's what you'll hear preached here more than anything else. But occasionally, you can't ignore a piece of great advice, great instruction that we were given in the Old Testament in, a, in one paragraph, really, one verse in the Bible, the recipe for God's blessings. It gives us a list of things that we should do to get God's blessings. And when we don't, we don't get God's blessings. When you don't seek the face of God, you'll look up and find the face of the devil. That demonic forces have taken over our planet Earth, taken over our country in particular, and they're destroying it from the inside out. And the way they got in there is because we didn't do the proper things to encourage and, and to nurture God's blessings for us. So what Old Testament scripture am I talking about? I'm referring to 2 Chronicles 7, 14, where the writer instructs us, this is God speaking, that if my people who were called by my name, so immediately it puts the responsibility for having a good country, for having a good community, for having a good life, on to the people who are, who are called by his name. So we are Christians. We follow Christ. If the, it's this, this requirement is on the Christians. It puts all the responsibility onto us that we are the people of God. We are the people that call ourselves by the name of Christians. We are people that worship God. We are God's people. And it's our fault that America has gone down the drain. Not the baby boomers necessarily, not the government, not the communists, not the Cold War, not the oil wars, not the inflation. It all comes down to the people of God not doing what the people of God are supposed to do. Once again, Second Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves... There is where we turned the, the corner. There is where we first stepped away from God's blessings. This is where we first started to condemn our country to financial ruin, international uh, conflict, internal conflict, internal debate, the breakdown of our society, the loss of the nuclear family, prayer being taken out of school to the point where Christians will be absolutely outlawed before this thing is all over because the devil took charge. Why? 
because of our pride and arrogance. If I could blame the baby boomer generation, I would say that that generation started this trend of selfishness and self-absorbance. This, this concept that you have to work on yourself, that you got to look out for number one, right? That you got to put your own needs first, right? We stopped being sacrificial. We stopped putting other people first. We stopped being sheep and we started being goats. And it all started with arrogance and pride. You know, I've got a lot of gifts from God. I have the gift of gab. They've been telling me that since first grade. I have the gift of music. They've been telling me that since third grade. I got the gift of God's blessings. And the reason why is because even though I recognize I'm a highly gifted person, that God was good to me. Maybe not in the looks department. <laughs> but I got a solid brain and a lot of talent. It's not arrogant for saying that because I give God the glory. In fact... I work diligently and always have been on my own humility. I try to humble myself. I'm just a guy who used to live in a van down by the river. I'm just an old curmudgeon codger who lives out in a cabin in the woods. All I have is the gifts that God gave me. There's nothing redeemable about me except those gifts. Without the gifts of God, I'm nothing. I'm nothing without him. This kind of humility we saw start to vanish. First in the church. Remember, it's God's people who the, the uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The responsibility, the onus is on us to be humble. See, this is a recipe in 2 Chronicles about how to get God's blessings. And the first on the list, on the list is to humble yourself. We're an arrogant and prideful, pride-filled nation that knows nothing of humility. One thing I can say about the greatest generation, when they came back from that awful war in the 1940s, those men had a certain humility about them. They were just glad to be alive. They were glad to be home. They wanted to give their families the best they could. Family was most the most important thing to the greatest generation, and they spoiled the baby boomers. They failed to teach them humility, and it was worse for Gen X. We were taught we're something special, and now the millennials and the Gen Zers, the most arrogant group we've ever produced, hands down, that Gen Z and millennials will tell you they know more than you even though you have a gray beard even though you've lived this life even though you have an education they're still in high school they know more than you it's the same arrogance that came on the baby boomers in the 1960s who sought to turn over the the world processes all the pro they set to upset the apple cart because they believed they knew more they knew what was better for their generation than the older generation <clears throat> you could blame rock and roll, you can blame movies, you can blame television, you could blame the internet. But ultimately, we let pride and arrogance come forward in a whole generation, and each generation has been worse than the one before. It's something to watch these people on uh, American Idol and some of these singing shows. They come out there, and they really think they're a rock star, and they can't carry a tune in the bucket. They think they're, uh, you know, what is it? <laughs> a hot tamale, right? <laughs> I'm old. They, they think they're the ultimate be-all, end-all, and they can't sing. And they're not as smart as they think they are, and they're not as good-looking as they think they are. They have this elevated and ballooned-up image of themselves. They're so prideful and so arrogant. And it is a breath of fresh air on those shows when you see somebody who really is a good-looking, attractive person and they can sing like an angel. And they have humility. Now, that's how you win those talent shows if you can combine those two things. Humility and talent. Humility and gifts. I find my humility in giving God credit for the gift. I was a 
redneck mixed race poor preacher's kid i had i had nothing uh, in this life i i would have ended up in prison but god blessed me so humility that's what we're lacking this is the recipe to get god's blessing ingredient number one god's people have to humble themselves these TV preachers that preach prosperity messages, wear $3,000 suits with $900 haircuts, flying around in jets. There's nothing humble about any of that. They should be living in a van down by the river. They should be living in a cabin in the woods. They should be living at the poverty level. But they're arrogant, pride-filled. They didn't humble themselves. So back to Second Chronicles. My people that are called by my name, name, that's me and you as Christians, would humble ourselves and pray. We stopped praying. When the prayer meetings went away in the churches, the prayer stopped in the homes, and then it stopped in the schools. Everybody wants to talk about how things went downhill hill when we took prayer out of schools. Things started going downhill when we took prayer out of the prayer closet. When we took prayer out of the Tuesday or Wednesday night church service. When we took prayer out of the off the dinner table. When we gathered around the golden idol of the television instead of praying together. Prayer left the home long before it left the school. Second Chronicles 7.14 If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face. We stopped seeking God in this country. We started seeking the almighty dollar. We started competing with the Joneses next door. We started seeing who could have the biggest trucks and the biggest pools and the biggest houses and the biggest bank accounts and the fanciest clothes and the name brand products. We started seeking money and power and privilege and comfort instead of seeking God. We don't seek God anymore. Chronicles, Second Chronicles 7.14 My people would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. One could argue that the first three is a definition of wicked ways. You're arrogant. You're prideful. You don't pray. You don't put God first. You seek after wealth, privilege, power, and money. That's wickedness. Stop caring about other people and only care about yourself. We got to turn from our wicked ways. We got to become that nation that when you see a car broke down alongside the road, you stop your day, you pull over and see what you can do to help. Be that good Samaritan. When you see somebody hungry, you feed them. Right? When you see somebody who, who's freezing, you give them a coat. When you see somebody who's thirsty, you hand them a bottle of water. When somebody's sick, you visit them, you pray for them. Somebody is homeless, you open your home to them. We stopped doing all of that. We have to turn from our wicked ways, return back to the, the, to the values that made this country good. That made this country great. You want to make America great again? Humble yourself. Pray. Seek God's face. Turn from your wicked ways. Put somebody else ahead of your own self for once. Then he tells us what he'll do. He'll forgive us of our sin. Give us a free slate. And then he'll heal our land. This is more than a covenant with God on how to have a blessed nation. This is an instruction manual. Be humble. Pray. Seek God's face. Put other people first. Take care of one another. Love one another. There's a novel idea. Greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for his friend. Love your neighbor as yourself. This is the law of love that we are violating as a nation, as a people, as a generation worldwide. And we have been since the 1950s and 60s, the last time America was really great. When I mean great, I mean prosperous. I mean people were generally happy. People were generally healthy.
you know, a lot of people are laying blame. They're laying blame on the government. They're laying blame on the leftists. They're laying blame on the entertainment industry. They're laying blame on, on immigrants. They're laying blame on the border policies. You know, physician heal thyself is something they say, but we need to heal ourselves, but we can't. We can't until we fulfill this contract with God. The church, the people that say they're Christians, the people that say they believe in God, it's time to start acting like that. It's time for you to humble yourself. You're not all that. I'm not any better than you and you're not any better than me. We're just human beings. I'm just a guy that used to live in a van down by the river. We got to pray. We got to really have a come to Jesus meeting in this country. We have to pray. We have to humble ourselves. We have to seek his face. We have to turn from our wicked ways. We have to want to be forgiven. If you think you're perfect, you're never going to ask for forgiveness. And no forgiveness will come your way. No blessings will come your way if you think you already are all that in a bag of chips. Was America once blessed by God when we used to sing that song? God bless America, land that I love. You know why we could love America? Because the people of America were more on track and aligned with God. They were more humble than this generation. They did seek God's face. They put God first as a priority in their life. They did pray. They didn't forsake their praying. They prayed morning, noon, and night. Twice on Sunday. <laughs> If you want God to heal this land, the onus, it's a big legal term, but the responsibility is on you, the good people, the sheep. There's an old saying that all that evil needs to win needs to be able to persist and flourish is if good people do nothing. Here's a recipe of what you can do. It used to be a song when I was a kid. Um... Uh, I may never ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery, I don't know, <laughs> march in the infantry. <laughs> I may never fly over the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. It's time that the army of God stand up and fulfill this ancient recipe for God's blessing. Humility, prayer, Putting God first. Putting other people ahead of yourself. Having a sacrificial love for one another. Turning from our wicked ways. And then he will forgive our sins. And he will heal this land. And I'm telling you what. America is a land in need of healing. The sheer evil and wickedness loose in the world. Comes from the root of arrogance. It comes from the root of faithlessness. It comes from the root of prayerlessness. It comes from the root of uh, not seeking God first. This is what caused all of this. And it wasn't them that did it. It was us, God's people. We didn't humble ourselves. We didn't seek his face. We didn't pray. We didn't ask for forgiveness and we didn't turn from our wicked ways. The responsibility is on the good people that are still here to do the right thing. Your call to action today is to put your selfishness to the side. Put your arrogance and pride to the side. <clears throat> do something good for somebody else today. <clears throat> Pray today. Seek God's face. Make him a priority in your life. In so many ways, we have to turn our back on our culture because our culture is teaching us to do the opposite of everything I just said. It's time to re-engineer our culture from the inside out. And it's God-fearing people that will do it. It's our responsibility. Will you step up to the plate? Will you join the Lord's army? 
God, against these demons of selfishness and pride, arrogance, faithlessness, prayerlessness, selfishness. The fight starts with you, and you're the only one that can do it. And you, you can do this, and it will transform your family. You live this way, and it'll transform your community. You live this way, and it'll transform your county, your state, this nation, and the world. But the responsibility lies on us. When we do the right thing, God will come through for us. And God will bless America again. God will find favor in our nation again. God will bless our finances. God will bless our families. God will bless our culture. God will bless our, our uh, citizens. Be an end to crime. A great diminishment of crime at the very least. A healing of our land. Wouldn't that be something? To avoid this world war, to avoid this civil war, to heal the division in our country, the people who are called by his name, call yourself a Christian, if you believe in God, then the responsibility is yours. Second Chronicles 7.14 gives you the secret recipe. Thank you so much for your support of this channel. Thank you so much for your kind words in the comments, the thumbs up, the subscription. Check your subscription and make sure you're still subscribed. Thank you so much for the financial gifts that keep this channel running. Without you helping me, I wouldn't be able to make any of these videos. And once every once in a while, maybe, if I had to work full time. So thank you for keeping me in the saddle, keeping me on this channel and preaching through your donations. The links are in the description. And I'll leave you with this powerful prayer. Lord, give us the power and the personal ability to humble ourselves, Lord. Lord, allow us to seek your face, Lord God. Lord, teach our people to pray. Put it in our hearts again to pray, to humble ourselves, to not be selfish people who are not obsessed with money, Lord. Make us obsessed with your love, the law of love, Lord God. Lord, forgive us of our sins and heal our land. Lord, send mighty angels a sufficient rank, authority, and number to drive the devil out of our entire system, out of our nation, out of our counties and states, out of our local government, out of our churches, out of our families. Drive the demons out of our homes, Lord God. And give us your peace, your blessings, and your loving, tender, loving care. Ask things, these things humbly in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next time on The Sheep Pen.